Hey guys, welcome back to Boho Jewel. My name's Sandra and I wanted to share with you a project I've been working on since we have been quarantined at home. So I have a ton of leftover yarns from various projects and some of them where I've taken stuff apart. So I have like little balls of yarn, whole skeins of yarn still. So I thought why not make sort of a Mod Podge blanket, kind of like a crazy quilt or something, right? So this is the blanket that I've started. It's super long, like I'm making this to fit two people, so it's really, really long. Um, but I will show you kind of the pattern, which is working out really well, and it's a basket weave crochet, and that's what I really wanted to show you. So it's really fun to see the colors. It's the same on the front and the back, so you get that really nice texture on both sides. But it's a really cool texture to use when you're doing several different colors of yarn, I think, when you're doing something like this. And it makes a pretty pattern on its own, too. So I wanted to share that. I think it kind of ties all the different yarns together really well. So that's what I'm going to show you guys today is basket weave crochet. So I'm just using this purple yarn. I think it was a four weight. I'm not really sure. I'm going to use this six and a half millimeter crochet hook. Um, try to get you guys to stop wobbling. Sorry, I don't know why that thing's so sensitive. So I'm going to start with my slip knot. Let me yarn this over, pull it around the back, pull this up in the front, get my hook through, and that's how I like to do my knot, my first knot. So now the idea with this stitch, the easiest thing that I found was to work in multiples of eight, okay? Um, I found other variations and for some reason creating the chain confused me on those this was the easiest explanation i found so let me share with you so we're going to chain one two three four five six seven eight just like that and then if i want it longer i'm going to chain eight more And if I want it longer, I chain eight more. Okay, so just multiples of eight. The easiest thing for me when it comes to stuff like this is I'm just gonna count the eights until I get it to the length that I want it. Okay, um, so I'm gonna do, let's see, I think I might do, I think I might just leave it at this just for demonstration purposes. Um, make it a little shorter. So there's my chains of eight. So I have 16 right here. Once you have it the length that you want it, you chain four more. So get it as long as you want it to be. And then one, two, three, four. These four are not part of your length. They're actually going to be part of your first stitch. Okay, so what we do here, we're working in double crochets. We're going to skip the first three stitches and work into the fourth one. So one, two, three, and we're working into this fourth stitch right here. So double crochet, yarn over, pull it through the stitch, yarn over, and you have those three loops, yarn over, pull it through two, yarn over, pull it through the last two. So we're going to do that all the way down the row. So again, pull the yarn over, work into the next stitch, pull the yarn over again, Lift your three, yarn over through two, yarn over through two. So we're doing double crochet throughout the entire pattern. My tips for that again, as usual, don't hold your yarn too tight. You need to give yourself a little wiggle room as you do these patterns. And um, especially when we start getting to the next steps, if you hold your work too tight, it's gonna, um, it's gonna be harder to get it to cooperate. Now double crochet, I love double crochet for larger projects like blankets because it does create a nice large stitch. So you see you get a lot of height with the double crochet. And with this pattern, it ends up not feeling loose. So don't worry about that because when you get that weave in there, it strengthens the whole stitch, but it definitely makes for faster progress than if you're doing, say a single crochet or a half double crochet. A shorter stitch. So let's get these last few in here and then you'll have your base row. This would be pretty for a scarf or a pillow case too, like a pillow covering would be really pretty pattern. 
Okay, so then we're going into our last stitch. Just like that. So this is our base row. Again, make it as long as you want to. So now I'm going to turn the work over, okay? And we're going into our first row. So first thing I'm going to do is chain two. And now I'm not working in the stitches anymore. We're gonna do front post double crochet and back post double crochet for the rest of the pattern of this. So front post double crochet. So we're, we're not working in this one because then we'll end up with a weird lumpy end right there. We're gonna work around this post right here will be our first post. So it starts the same, you yarn over, and then we go through that first space, come out on the other side of that post, yarn over and pull it through, and then yarn over and pull it through the next two. So again, yarn over, we're working through the front first, pull it around that post, yarn over, pull it back through, pull it through two, pull it through two. Now we're going to work in patterns um, in fours, in multiples of four. So front post double crochet, so we have our one, two, three, four, front post double crochet. Now we're gonna do back post for four. So it starts the same, yarn over, but instead of going through here, we're going to bring our crochet hook around the back, put it through there, and then weave it through the front. So you have your post on the back side, yarn it over, pull it through your post, lift your yarn through the front two and through the next two. Again, yarn over, pull it through the next space, so that post is in the back, just like that. So you see how it works in the back now. So again, through the back, just like that. So it's three and we're gonna do one more. and then we alternate. So that's our four front post, four back post, and now we're going to do front post again. Now one thing I'll tell you, I notice like when I'm working and I'm watching TV, <laughs> I kind of get distracted. So if you're holding the work back like this, it's really easy to think that this stitch belongs to this post. See how that can look? So, but then when you straighten it up, you'll see where it really lives right there. So just kind of be aware of that. So. We're going to do four front posts now, and then four back posts again. One, and four, okay, and then the back post. I feel like that first row is always wobbly, no matter what project I'm working on. I feel like it's always wobbly trying to get that first row to cooperate with me. Wait for a second to get those last four in there. So now you'll see, you'll start to see that pattern of the front post, back post, front post, back post. Now on the end of that base row, you'll see this little guy's tail hanging out. So you're not gonna work through that loop. You're actually going to work through that very last stitch a double crochet. And sometimes it can be a little tricky to find that guy at first, but we're working through that very last stitch and we're putting a double crochet. And you will do that on every row. So now we're gonna turn it and this is where it changes a little bit. So normally you would want to maybe do the opposite and I suppose you could, but you're not gonna get a lot of definition. So we're going to do two of the same on each one. So right now we have our front post double crochet. So we're gonna do just like we did on the other side. So we're gonna one, two, chain two, and then work front post double crochet around those four. And it makes the pattern a little taller and a little more defined. I imagine it would be pretty if you didn't do that, um, if you just alternated. But um, I think this is what really gives it that basket weave effect. So now we have 
row one of double crochet, row two of double crochet stacked on top of each other. Now we're gonna go through and do back double crochet so that part of the pattern stays the same. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then show you guys what I mean about how that looks and how that turns out. Okay, so now you can see we have that basket weave kind of texture and it does show up on both sides where it looks like it's going in and out. So we've got that first row and the second row that match up. So now what we're doing, I finished this one already and did my double crochet in the last chain that top chain, we're going to turn it over, chain two, okay, and same idea, but this time I have my two stacks of double crochet, I'm going to start this row back post double crochet. So I've got my two rows of front post double crochet rather, and now I'm going to do four back post, And just like with most crochet, as the pattern starts to develop, it's really easy to kind of fall into a rhythm of it and see where you're going with it. So I have that now where my back posts are, I'm going to do front post. So working around that front post. like that. Okay, so that's when you can really start to see that pattern develop. So again, I'm going to go back post here and front post here, and then when I turn it over, I'm going to continue that pattern. So there it is. That gives you a good idea of how it stacks up. And that is what you continue through each row. So we have two front post, two back post rows, same thing. And then on the opposite side, you just reverse it and you make that as long as you want to. So once you get, again, once you get into kind of the rhythm of it, you'll see how that pattern starts to come about and you'll start to notice if you missed a stitch somewhere or not. So I hope you guys enjoy that and I hope that you do some projects with that. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel um, for more crochet and other crafty tutorials coming up. I hope you guys are all staying safe and healthy and I'll see you soon.